What's up guys, Flippin' Steve here, coming to you from you know where. It is a terrible, terrible rainy day actually here in the 302. I gotta make a trip to the mailbox. I have nine packages, which means I'm gonna need a bag and an umbrella. Before you spend another precious second of your valuable time watching my video, I must put in a disclaimer verbally. My YouTube content sucks. Be forewarned, my content is not good and you will not enjoy this video. Total of nine packages here. A variety of everything here. Got some prospecting stuff, got some bargain cards. Cheap stuff, a little bit more expensive stuff, some authentication stuff, IG, eBay, uh, different platforms, all kinds of different pickups, but you guys don't care about this stuff. Save this box. You know why. That'll wrap up the mail portion of the video. Who really cares what the cards were anyway? Who came here to look at cards? All right, all right, guys. I've spent enough energy on it. Now that the passive aggressive portion of the video is over, we can get into why you guys really came. That is to look at the cards. It is to see what I got in the mail. That is the buy, sell, trade, and hobby, the way that we love to do it. Look at some raw cards. Of course, we got a sprinkle crazy daisy in there, whatever pops up in my day. I know my day can be boring, and if it's not exciting, don't watch it. Definitely don't waste your time putting out a YouTube video running down others unless you absolutely have nothing better to do with your time, and that says a lot. Cheap Tom Brady slab here, Panini Legacy Under the Lights Gold in a PSA 10. I'll flash the pop report up there. And it is numbered out of 25. Couldn't see the serial numbering. Case hit American Metal out of Panini Pages of uh, Joe Burrow. I don't do a whole lot with Joe Burrow, but this was a good deal. I also got the Aaron Rodgers uh, yesterday. I'm prospecting card here. The Phoenician case hit of Bryce Young. I think these inserts are awesome looking. The better quarterbacks like Stroud and even Richardson uh, sell for high dollar. Bryce Young's stuff is really in the gutter because he struggled his rookie year, but somebody will want his stuff at the National. I just know it. I have a lot of catching up to do, especially in this video. My last two days off have been busy. It's been my wife's birthday. I had some friends over last night for a little party, and we just got back from going out to dinner. Went to a cool little uh, charcuterie place that just opened up here in town that's themed like old mobsters. And stuff. Oh, Doing this part-time with my full-time job and juggling my family and just fall behind on things. You saw where I got in nine packages early today and got in about five more cards yesterday. That's at least uh, 14 to 15 cards that I need to prep for grading. I haven't been able to make a few eBay deals here and there because it's simple, but I haven't been able to do much negotiating um, on Instagram or much trading on Veriswap. I haven't even been able to pay attention to those platforms. Just been busy. I touched on this in one of my last videos, you know, we're keeping yourself balanced with your family and doing things in moderation and not overdoing it. But I also talked about in a video earlier this week or a week, a week or so ago about how not letting yourself fall behind on your inventory or you'll never catch up. So I'm gonna have some catching up to do tonight. I'm gonna grade some cards with you with me. It might be sort of boring. I have been invited to be on a live stream with Michael Hamm and Ziggy tonight. So I might go spend 30 or so minutes there as well. So again, stretching my time out, but it is fun. It is what I like to do, so I'm not complaining. I am contemplating cracking out this Starcade insert of Tom Brady in a PSA 9. I bought this for 200 bucks and I would have bought this card raw for 200 bucks. I did not pay the initial grading fee, so a crack and resubmission for me would make sense because if I would have bought it for 200 raw, I'd have paid to have it graded anyway. And hopefully it comes back and it'll 10. I will compare it to this Lamar Jackson that I have in a PSA 10 and just look at the two cards the best I can together 
and see where maybe the flaw was on the Tom Brady. I'm backstage, waiting to get on to uh, the Card Hunter with Michael Ham and Ziggy No. They're about to bring me on. Let's see what we're going to talk about. I've been in a little bit of a pissy mood this this morning and afternoon, but I'm in a good mood now. So we'll see what we uh, we'll see what we talk about. I'm also looking at the Patrick Mahomes eclipse or solar eclipse in the BGS nine case. I will compare it to the BGS nine of the LeBron. I'm not looking to cross this uh, patty into a PSA 10. What I'm looking for is to just get this into a PSA slab because this BGS slab is holding back its value. Contemplating on cracking the touchdown masters gold fluorescent in a BGS nine five. The surface is what got the nine. So again, Kind of sketchy on that. I will try to evaluate it best I can from outside of the case. The topic I kind of want to talk about in today's video is going to be superstitions or myths or beliefs that someone may have when they go to send their cards into grading. Um, we all know that this stuff is done by humans, so there is always room for error on the human side of things. And there's also emotion that could be involved. Humans, you know, we have we have feelings, we have thoughts, and people like to joke. I hope my grader goes to work in a good mood. You know, maybe they got lucky and got some booty this morning or something like that. I hope that they didn't spill their coffee in their lap on their way to work, or they're going to give me all bad grades. So again, there is the human error and the human emotion. But what I'm talking about is some uh, notions, whether they're false or true, that people sometimes think. And they'll often give you recommendations when sending in your graded cards. They'll say, you should do this, you should do that, it's going to help you. Um, but I'm not going to typically believe in a lot of that stuff. Because things can go either way. As somebody that works in a casino, there's always if, ands, and buts about things could the way things could happen. But the truth is, is that it's all still just chance. It's all still just risk. And I talked about the gambling aspect of going raw to graded on cards in my last video or actually a couple videos ago, I'm getting lost in time. I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't also talk about this. This is a very clean Aaron Rodgers card, uh, happy. So number one is, should you break your bulk orders up into smaller orders? You know, if you have a 50 card order, should you send it in in uh, denominations of, of 25, maybe two orders of 25 or five orders of 10 or whatever. You know, it's gonna cost you more shipping. You have to send out more packages. You're gonna have to do more submissions. You're not gonna be able to send them in in one big group. But some people believe that you should break them up because you don't want the same grader getting all of your cards. And the one thing that I want to say about that is if you have a good grader or a grader that we talked about earlier, maybe in a good mood going to work that day, uh, but maybe just their skill alone at being a grader is good. Maybe they've been doing it longer than a lot of the new hires. Then you want all your cards going to that grader. So just by chance, you could be getting a good grader. And if you are if you have a 50-card submission, you want all 50 cards going to that person. And the belief that, hey, I want them divided up because I want different graders looking at them. I may not want the same grader on all of my cards. Well, say, for instance, you have a good grader, but then half of your cards go to a grader that's not as good, you know, that's been through some shit, just isn't as experienced in grading cards. Either way you look at it, you're taking the chance of a good grader getting all of your cards, or a bad grader getting all of your cards, or a good grader getting half of them, and a bad grader getting half of them. So it really doesn't matter. There's no way to determine this type of stuff. The best thing that you can do is cross your fingers and just send your card order in. I've run into a problem here on the Bryce Young Phoenician. The top load is too tight for the card, as this is a thicker card and someone has stuffed this into this top load. It doesn't look damaged, but I need to try to get this out without damaging the card. And I've tried everything, and I've dug down in here and I've tried to pull it, point, and it just the card just won't even budge. I had to peel away the top of the top loader to get my fingers way down in there to be able to get it out. Clean card here. Another superstition that some people might think is put your good cards in the front of your order. Uh, typically when you do a submission, they're going to grade them in the order that you submit them in down the list and in the order that you send your cards in your stack. Now, when you say good, you could be talking about two different circumstances here. You could be talking about your good cards and your higher value cards peel this seal off of this, or you could be talking about your good cards as in your better condition cards. Now the thought is, is that a grader uh, getting your cards is going to be more alert, more aware, more fresh in their mind and not burned out as they start into your submission. So you're going to want your higher value cards to go first. You know, this is the thought of some people because then they're going to be able to look at your cards and they're going to assess your cards with better judgment. 
the Brady and the Mahomes have been snapped out. Honestly, this could 10. I'm just wanting to cross this into a PSA 9 case from the BGS 9, but it could 10, which would be amazing. This card, I believe PSA got right. They had it as a 9. It'll probably come back a 9 again. There's a very, very, very small hairline scratch above the C. You can't even see it on the camera under my magnification. But with a certain glare on the card, you can see it. So I think PSA got that right. I will not be snapping the Mahomes gold. Because even though BGS gave it corners of 9.5, if you look at this back right corner down here, it's got a ding of white. There's no way that PSA tends this. So it's not worth um, getting into a slab if it's going to take it down to a PSA 9. Another thought is that as a grader gets through your order, as they get to the end, they could be tired, they could be burned out, and at that point, they just start slapping grades on there without giving you fair assessments. Ugh, this Josh Allen metal card has a scratch right down it. I'm going to slap out eights, nines, and not necessarily just throw a 10 out there without a solid evaluation. But you never really know. You know, they could just be like, hey, this looks good. They miss a scratch. They make an error in your favor. And boom, they throw a 10 on there. Because there's errors can be made both ways. Errors can be made against you where... Uh, a grader just overgrades a card. They, they find an error that doesn't necessarily exist. Or there's times when they don't see an error on a card because it's an oversight because either they're rushed or they're tired. The actual truth to this is that you're just assuming that the grader is going to start with your order to begin his day. Say, for instance, you have a 30-card order in, but there's somebody ahead of you with 20 cards. In essence, your first card to that grader is going to be card number 21. It may be the first out of your uh, order, but you if you're not the first order of the day, then you're not the first cards that are going to be seen. So this notion that, you know, put your good cards first, put your good cards last, still completely left up a chance because you don't know when the grader is going to start on your cards in his assignment for the day, uh, which kind of, again, throws that notion like clearly straight out the window. FedEx just dropped off a package here. We'll take a look at this package if the video doesn't run too long. You cannot eat the FedEx delivery person. They were bringing our card. Another thought, and that is people saying you should send multiples or not send multiples of the exact same card in the same order. Um, for reasonings that if they have continuously the same flaw. To get frustrating when card after card after card, Panini has a defect. There is a surface dimple below the J and CJ Stroud. That is a manufacturer's error. Got the Stroud Thrillers out of blue here. Honestly thought that this one might be my first decent grade, but it also has a surface dimple very similar to the red one that I just showed you. I have graded four of these Thrillers rookie cards since starting this video, and this is the first of the four that doesn't have a surface dimple. Then the grader might look at it and say, well, hey, that's just the way that this card is, and then they'll be more lenient on your card. For instance, I just showed that these have surface dimples. And a grader may look and say, well, these just come with surface dimples. That's the way that they are. That's, that's going to be a 10. However, in this case, like I just said, this one does not have a surface dimple. So now this card is actually going to magnify the flaws on the other three. So in, in which case should you do what? If, if, if one card tends to be stronger than the other three, is it going to make the three other three grade less? Or if all four of them are the same, is it going to make the grader say, hey, this is the way that the card is. They all look good to me. I'm going to grade them favorably. So again, it could go either way with that. There's just no way. There's just no help. Everybody would be getting perfect tens if we could gauge some of these scenarios correctly. Only a way that I could divide these out, maybe 20 per order. And I need to put my high-valued ones in the front. Man, this one has a ding on it. I'm not sure where to put this one. Kelsey has a really bad corner. You guys can see it on the camera. Big old major white dinger. Probably still send it in just to get a slab on it in a nine. A collector would rather have it in a slab than raw. I'm going to say the corner ding on that card probably came from being put into a mag without a soft sleeve. If you're not uh, using like pro molds or something like that to have the soft sleeve that fit inside the, the magnetics, uh, the one touches, then you're doing it wrong these days. Cards are so sensitive, whether it be chromium surfaces or even cardboard corners and edges that chip really easily that you just don't want them floating around loosely in one of these mags. I know it might advertise well as, hey, this is good protection, but you need to have um, a layer between the plastic and the card. So a nice soft sleeve inside. I use pro molds, not affiliated, no link. I'm just saying, protect your cards, especially when you wanna grade them, or if you wanna sell high quality raw cards to people and not have them get a card from you in the mail with a defect on it. The last thing I wanna talk about is people who say that they slip cash into their card savers 
with their card so that the grader takes it and they're like, oh, well, they slipped me a 20, they slipped me a 50. If it's a big time card, they slipped me a 100. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a, a nice grade. You know, maybe I'll send them a picture of Daisy and then they'll say, oh, how can I turn this card down from being a 10? But that just sounds like complete horse shit to me. Uh, depending on the farm that you live on, maybe it's pig shit, maybe it's horse shit, who knows. If you're having giant dog, maybe it's dog shit. Anyway, they go through so many different steps and phases, whether it's uh, research and analysis or just shipping and things like that, that if you put money into a card saver, that money is not gonna make it to the grader. So people who say that are doing that to try to either sound cool or they're trying to troll or whatever, that's just absolute shit, 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 shit. That's what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap today's video, guys, before it runs too long. If you wanna see the FedEx package before next video, head over to Instagram and follow me, flipping underscore Steve. I post my cards a lot earlier over there. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and the subscribe on the way out. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care of yourself. Until next time, later. Superstitions are ridiculous. Got a 44 card order here, and I need to add one more card to make it 45.